Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to my workshop in New Jersey. It's been a while since I made my last video, and I I decided to share with you my ordinary day in my work workshop. For those who don't know me well, I build guitars, classical concert guitars, and I also do repairs, upgrades, refinishing, restorations. And uh, what always comes in a big question is the playing action of the guitars and uh, how to set the proper playing action on the traditional made guitars and on the, on the modern made guitars. I have a very good sample of guitars today in my workshop four vintage guitars that uh, well I'll prove you sort of that uh, it has nothing to do with the construction from the beginning it has to do something how the guitar uh, was living in which conditions and how it affects the body shape and uh, overall playability and the playing action so let's start with the uh, traditional guitars. The guitars I have today here is uh, the apprentice of Hauser one Edgar Monk, if I'm saying it right, uh, and uh, two of Monk guitars and two uh, Manuel Velasquez. Uh, what they have to uh, in common all these builders that they all build guitars in the Spanish traditional way with the Spanish heel construction. Can you come here? Spanish heel construction is done this way. You have the neck, you have the side cut out, and then you simply put the sides in there, make it really tight, glue it, and once this is all done, you build the tailpiece to the end, like this. You glue the back on the guitar and the top. And this construction is permanent. These uh, guitars cannot be, cannot be disassembled anymore once you do this with the Spanish heel. With the modern way, What I do, and most uh, today's guitar builders do, we bolt on the necks. In other words, it's, it's fastened to the body and we can easily take it off whenever we need to work, put our hands inside or make adjustment. And the adjustment I'm going to be making today is the plane action. You see, with this construction, You come from this side. You know the one very important thing: the neck from the side. The neck is uh, fastened to the body, and we need to create a body neck angle and set the plane action. So if you stay from the side here, so if you see the string, let's say it's four millimeters above the twelfth fret. Okay, if I with the nut upwards the action is very high if i go down i can make it sit on the frets if i want to with that angle to the body when you do the spanish construction once you go the back and the top to it that's it if you did not set the angle properly you will have problems and sometimes you will have problems over years when the guitar collects moisture and the neck will move in upright position due to moisture in, in the air. So today I have a guitar for, for Monk. Uh, this is 1953 and 1959, okay. Uh, this guitar, uh, this is the 53, is built exactly like Hauser was built. Seven fan bracing, nice guitar. It has a crack, I will do French polishing of the crack. It has a very good neck, pretty straight with minor relief. 
After all these years, nothing has changed, except that somebody filed the threads too much. They're almost flat. So I will do a refret. I will put new threads. And that's it. Well, this other guitar, the Monk, had a problem with moisture or the conditions or the climate where the guitar was living in. And the neck went too much in the upward position. The action was very high. So somebody, to uh, remedy to this problem is to lower the action. But sometimes the saddle is so low that you cannot do that anymore. You can see that. It's almost flat coming out. They could not lower it anymore. So the second uh, thing you can do is you plane down the fingerboard. So you can sit the strings lower. But in this case, that person playing the dart too much. And if we come here, I already made, made little sketches and uh, measurements where I can explain it better. Uh, this is coincidentally taken from a guitar built by Herman Hauser II in 1968, I believe. And the reason I changed the fingerboard is this, come to the light. It had these huge divots in the fingerboard. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes. And also very bad frets. It wasn't worth it to play in this down and change the frets because it's just too extreme. So I changed the fingerboard. The customer asked me to do that. Change the fingerboard. But point here is that this is a perfectly constructed fingerboard where you have this uh, thickness here around the first fret six to seven millimeters by the norm and and at the end you should have it four to five millimeters there is no set rule for that but this is four to five or six to seven while that guitar that monk here by planing it down it's 2.7 millimeters you can see the fingerboard how thin 2.7 millimeters that's bad. And also, for some reason, that's from uh, the Luthier, he made it only 3.5, which is still acceptable. But the problem is here. What, what, uh, what also happens here is once you remove the wood from the fingerboard to this thin fingerboard, let me put it back, what happens is you change the frequency of the neck. And because the ebony, Wood is very dense and heavy. It it has it, it's one of the elements to the sound of the guitar. And once you have it so thin like the other one, it will change the frequency, it will change the vibration, and it will give you time to time this mysterious buzz. So changing that fingerboard is the right thing to do. Uh, <clears throat> So this is the Spanish, uh, and again, uh, I will uh, check everything else, uh, refinish, fresh polish the back of this guitar. And now the Velasquez, same exact construction. Also, even the Hauser body, slightly deeper than Hauser, but still the same. Uh, I had these two guitars here about three years ago, and uh, the owner, I just set them up, they were good. No cracks, beautiful guitars. The owner had a ring, a wedding band like this. And when they were picking up the guitar or playing the guitar, they were making these gouges in the neck. So I did the small thing, I just refinished the necks. They look like new now. French polished the necks on both of these guitars. But as you see, uh, if I just look at the neck, the fingerboard, it's perfectly done. Right taper. Six to seven millimeters here, four to five here. And that's about it. This is what I do every day. Build my guitars. And uh, share this video with you. So if you think your guitar is unplayable, you, you could be wrong.
can bring to me and we can look at it and see if uh, the guitar will qualify for this kind of elaborate, unfortunately costly upgrade. And uh, what else? Uh, <laughs> I want to thank everybody for supporting me, for trusting me with their guitars. And I really hope uh, I see you soon in some kind of guitar festivals or here in my workshop. And until next time, my next video, stay safe everybody. Thank you.